If you've seen my channel at all, you guys know I'm a huge advocate for long hair on men. And I know many men wish they could grow their hair longer, but struggle from hair loss. Now, I've had a lot of guys reach out and ask about natural solutions to hair thinning because the two common growth solutions out there can work sometimes, but it doesn't come without baggage. So, minoxidil side effects include severe scalp irritation, unwanted facial hair growth, chest pain, fast heartbeat, rapid weight gain, dizziness, temporary swelling from low blood pressure. Finasteride side effects include erectile dysfunction, loss of interest in sex, low libido, abnormal ejaculations, dizziness. I mean, should I go on? Guys, there's gotta be a better hair growth treatment out there. Fortunately, science tells us there might be. And no, it's not castor oil, it's not jojoba oil, and it's not argan oil. So what is it? Let's get into it. What's up guys, Trav White here. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I love talking about how to make you look and feel your best through grooming, self-care, hair care, style. If that's your thing, hit that like and subscribe button and join the family. I do a lot of research for my videos and this video in particular took me hours and hours of research. And you guys showing love really helps motivate me and keep me going and uh, really helps me bring you the best evidence-based videos out there for men on the internet web. So please hit that like and subscribe if you find this content valuable. Now, really quickly, big disclaimer before starting, none of this is medical advice, all right? I'm not a doctor. I'm just a guy who does research on hair growth. I'm not advocating or prescribing you anything. This isn't sponsored by any hair supplement or growth company. So please don't sue me if you try these things and it doesn't work. <laughs> All right, I'm just bringing you guys all of the info that I find and I'll link to all of my research in the description. Okay, moving on. There are two US FDA sanctioned hair loss medications and you've probably heard of them. They are the oral finasteride. Um, what? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Oil finasteride, which is Propecia, and the topical minoxidil, which is Rogaine. Minoxidil was first introduced as a drug to help fight high blood pressure. And this is by the Upjohn Pharmaceutical Company. And Upjohn himself even warned against it for all of the negative side effects that come along with it. I know if you're suffering from male pattern baldness or androgenetic alopecia, that there is no 100% cure. The response to minoxidil isn't even seen for four to 10 months, and for it to keep working, you have to keep using it, or else if you stop using it, hair growth is going to fall back into a regression again. And minoxidil only has a 48% effectiveness in hair regrowth once it's lost, and a 62% effectiveness for reducing loss. Finasteride, on the other hand, has a little bit of a higher effectiveness, which is around 87%, but you're sacrificing, you know, the trade-off is all of the side effects, your sexual health, your uh, irritation, low libido, like all of those things that no guy wants to go through, right? You know, I'm not saying that these natural alternatives that I'm about to give you are a cure, but I am saying that they have been tested and a lot, there's a lot of science that I found and some have even outperformed minoxidil or performed on par with finasteride without any of the side effects. And traditional plant remedies have been used for centuries to treat hair loss, but very few have been scientifically evaluated. But because, you know, I got your guys' back, I want you to be the most confident, best looking, most attractive men on the planet. And I went into all the research because I wanna help you do that. All right, enough rambling. Let's dive into the findings. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the studies that have a little bit more limited research, meaning that these studies were done on mice or show potential. And then I'm gonna move on to the more popular studies that were actually done on men suffering from genetic hair loss. The first natural alternative to minoxidil that I found as a potential candidate is peppermint oil. So a study was done in the official journal of Korean science of toxicology where they tested peppermint oil against minoxidil and jojoba oil in hair growth in mice. Now I know what you, what you might be thinking, mice aren't humans, right? And you're absolutely right. But it's important to note that humans and mice share tons of similarities metabolically and immune system wise. And now that doesn't mean you can 100% replicate these studies done in humans, but many studies done in mice have led to breakthroughs in human science. 
So I'll link to a video below on if we can trust studies done on mice because that's not the topic of this video. So anyways, let's get back to the info. The study was there were four groups of mice. Uh, group one received saline, group two received peppermint oil, group three received minoxidil, and group four received jojoba oil. Now of the four experiment groups, the peppermint oil group showed the most prominent hair growth effects. A significant increase in the number of hair follicles, follicle thickness, follicle depth, and additionally, peppermint oil had the highest increase in the gene expression of insulin-like growth factor, which is IGF-1, which is a known biomarker for enhancing hair growth. But that wasn't all that I found. Let me present you with some more findings. So a key ingredient in peppermint oil is menthol. And there's been a lot of controversy over whether menthol is a vasodilator or vasoconstrictor, basically meaning it either widens your blood cells or constricts them. And the vasoconstrictor crowd says menthol cools your skin down, therefore closing your blood vessels. But new research shows that the cooling effect of menthol is just a feeling on your skin. And menthol actually widens widens blood vessels, which increases blood flow. And this is great news for hair growth because according to research from Massachusetts General Hospital, hair growth has been directly linked to better blood flow to hair follicles. So peppermint oil is looking like a great contender for hair growth as a natural alternative. And I can't wait for more research to come out on human studies and things like that. So number two, the second contender for our natural alternative is lavender oil. There was a study published on April 30th, 2016 in the same journal as before, the Korean Society of Toxicology and this topically applied lavender oil on the backs of mice. And the mice were divided into five groups. Group one was the, the normal group, uh, the control group given saline. Group two was a vehicle control group, which was given jojoba oil. And group three was the positive control group, which was given 3% minoxidil. And then there are two experiment groups, which were given 3% uh, lavender oil and 5% lavender oil. And it was mixed with jojoba oil. So they applied each topically once a day, five times per week for four weeks. And then they measured hair follicle number, dermal thickness, and follicle depth. By the end of the fourth week, compared to the normal group, the minoxidil group had shown a 99.8% increase in hair growth, the 3% lavender oil showed 90% increase, and the 5% lavender oil group and the 5% lavender oil group showed a 95% increase. So the 5% lavender oil formula only underperformed minoxidil by 4.8%. And when they were observing for side effects, the mice with the minoxidil groups showed negative side effects and the lavender oil group had zero negative side effects. So if you're looking for a natural alternative with zero side effects, lavender oil is definitely something that you can try because it's widely available. You can get it over the counter. Again, I'm waiting for more research to come out that's done on humans or males who are suffering from genetic hair loss. But so so far, peppermint oil with mice, lavender oil with mice, it's looking promising like there's some potential. So let's move forward to number three. The third oil on this list is rosemary oil. So in a 2015 randomized controlled trial in Skin Med Journal, there are human patients this time with AGA, which is androgenetic alopecia. They were randomly assigned either uh, rosemary oil or 2% minoxidil treatment for six months. Now, by the end of the six months, both groups experienced a significant increase in hair count. And I couldn't see the exact numbers, which outperformed which, but the abstract did show that rosemary oil has some efficacy in the treatment of hair loss without any side effects. Some scalp irritation was reported for both treatments, but in the minoxidil treatment, it was much, much worse. So jumping on to number four, oil number four is pumpkin seed oil. So in April of 2014, researchers from Pusin University in Korea published a study. It was the Evidence-Based Complementary and Alternative Medicine Journal. That's a mouthful to say, but <laughs> the randomized placebo-controlled double-blind study was designed to investigate the efficacy of pumpkin seed oil in hair growth treatment. And this was done on males with mild to moderate hair loss, uh, genetic hair loss, or AGA alopecia. I'm just going to call it AGA from now on. The patients with AGA received 400 milligrams of pumpkin seed oil per day or a placebo for 24 weeks. So the hair growth was evaluated based on four outcomes. It was uh, photographs, self-assessment scores, 
pores, scalp hair thickness, and scalp hair count. So after 24 weeks, the results were the mean hair count increased in patients with AGA who used pumpkin seed oil by 40%, whereas the placebo group only increased 10%. And there were zero negative side effects in both groups. And one important thing to note is I did find a peer reviewed critique written uh, to the editors of this study that were saying two things. The first was that they didn't publish results for frontal alopecia, which is an early sign of AGA. They would want to see those results because if you treat it early enough, there could be a much higher likelihood of success. And the second critique was the duration of the study. They wanted it to be at least one year because as men, there's a huge fluctuation between our hormone levels that's seasonal. So it's much higher in the summer and much lower in the fall. And this can affect the antigen phase of growth, which is the hair growth phase. Other than that, the people who peer reviewed the study were really excited about the findings. So pumpkin seed oil done on men had a 40% increase in, in mean hair count and growth. I think that is an awesome natural alternative with something with zero side effects. So the final and most exciting natural alternative is saw palmetto. And saw palmetto is a type of berry found in the palm tree family. Saw palmetto is really exciting because it works very similarly to finasteride without the negative side effects that can affect your sex drive. So finasteride works as a DHT blocker. There's an enzyme in, uh, in your body called 5A reductase. And this is the enzyme that your body uses to convert your testosterone into dihydrotestosterone. I'm just gonna call it DHT. Some men's hair follicles are way more sensitive to DHT than others. And that sensitivity is what's believed to lead to male pattern baldness or androgenetic alopecia. And this sensitivity is completely determined by your genetics. Now, there are some myths out there that it's actually an overproduction of DHT, which is what causes hair loss. But what I found was that's actually false. It's how sensitive your follicles are to DHT that will determine if you actually have hair loss or not. Finasteride works as a DHT blocker. It reduces the amount of DHT that reaches your follicles, so your hair keeps on growing and doesn't prematurely get knocked into the telogen phase, and you can stay in the antigen phase of growth. What does that have to do with saw palmetto? So now enter saw palmetto. This this is the only natural alternative that also functions as a DHT blocker as well. In December of 2014, in the Turkish Journal of Dermatology, a small study was conducted testing the safety and effectiveness of a topical saw palmetto lotion in male patients with AGA. So the results are pretty good. I wouldn't say they were amazing, but total hair count was increased by almost 12%. And according to basically like photograph observation, 48% of the patients had a visible increase in hair growth. Growth, but there was no noticeable difference in about 36% of the patients. So there were zero negative side effects with the saw palmetto oil. Even though there's a lot more research still needed, this is one of the most exciting breakthroughs for natural alternatives to finasteride and minoxidil. So now I wanna bring up a bonus oil that I found because I found a really interesting study about tea tree oil. So since minoxidil has some bad side effects, the main one being scalp irritation, there was another study in January of 2013 at Ria college. This study tested basically a control group versus minoxidil alone versus minoxidil plus tea tree oil. And tea tree is a natural anti-infective agent. So the test was done to see if they could reduce the scalp irritation caused by minoxidil by adding tea tree oil as like a mixture into an application. And so there are 32 men, they are aged from 18 to 30 years old, and it was randomized and they would apply one milliliter of the minoxidil plus tea tree or minoxidil alone or the placebo. So this was done twice daily to the affected areas for 32 weeks. And the results were actually pretty astounding. Minoxidil plus tea tree oil combined achieved significantly superior responses than both the minoxidil alone and the placebo. And not only in reducing side effects like scalp irritation, but also there was a much higher improvement in hair growth and hair thickness. So the patients also self-reported that the combination significantly slowed their hair loss, increased their hair growth, and improved appearance, and uh, showed no worse side effects. I thought this was really cool because if you're someone who's been taking minoxidil but you're getting all these bad side effects with it, if the main one is scalp irritation for you or like itchy skin, then try adding some tea tree oil to it as an alternative and doing a mixture and seeing if that works. As I was making this video, I just started wondering like why weren't there more human studies for FDA approval for these natural remedies? And I think it all honestly just came down to money. 
You know, these pharmaceutical companies can't make billions of dollars slinging over the counter essential oils. But you're a smart guy, right? You can avoid the horrible side effects that come with finasteride and minoxidil and use some of these more natural alternatives that science is starting to show are coming to light. So let me know down in the comments, which one of these are you gonna try? I'm personally trying peppermint oil right now on uh, these beard patches that I have, and I'm, I'm gonna do it for 60 days and I'm just gonna see how it works. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.